Okay, so today we're going to talk about the role music plays in film, uh, how different pieces of music can change the mood of a scene, the process of creating a cue from start to finish, and look at some examples of how steel pan can be incorporated into films and other type of media. So I'm going to do a short exercise. Uh, I'm, going to, I'm going to play 10 seconds of some random soundtracks. And what I want from you is as soon as you can identify what movie it's from, just raise your hand and I'll stop the music and you'll answer. Right? Let's see how fast we can identify these movies. So, first one. Hey, oh God, oh God, oh God, don't do me that now, man. Come now, man. Right. Well, that was Star Wars, right? That was less than a second. Eh? That was less than a second. Eh? You all are proving my point, by the way. Thank you very much. Lion King, right? That was less than a second again. Third one. Jaws, right? That, oh gosh, oh gosh, come now, man. Something like that now. That was this one, right? Yeah. Right. And. Yeah. See, see, see. Avengers, right. And the last one. Yeah. Harry Potter. Good, nice. So, you all are proving my point, which is that music is, is essential essential to films because it can give you that, that sense of as soon as you hear it, you know what movie it's from. Directors love that. Directors love being able to, you hear something and their movie is going in your head. They love that stuff. So they, they really like to have a score that is um, unique to that movie. So when you hear the soundtrack, your mind goes immediately to that movie. So what is the role of music in film? I'll actually build upon what Miss Hinmenel said at the media launch back in May, she gave me my first two points. She didn't even know that, but she did. So, the roles of music in film, no, there are many, yeah. So it, it, has, it, it, it enhances the cinematic experience by adding emotional depth, creating atmospheres, and amplifying storytelling. It also evokes and intensifies emotions, whether it's excitement, suspense, romance, melancholy. It also helps to establish the setting and the time period of a film, immersing viewers in the world being portrayed. It also enhances character development by providing insight into their emotions, motivations, and their inner thoughts. And soundtracks themselves can become iconic and closely associated with specific films and characters like we just did in the last exercise. There's more. It can also heighten tension, build anticipation, provide relief, creating a dynamic and engaging viewing experience. And the right music can make or break a scene. I will say that again. The right music, sorry. Yeah, the right music can make or break a scene, intensifying its impact and resonating with the audience. It also complements and enhances other cinematic, cinematic elements, such as visuals, dialogue, and sound effects, to create a cohesive and impactful audiovisual experience. And it serves as a powerful storytelling tool, guiding the audience's emotions and enhancing the narrative coherence. So there are two types of music in film and different types of media, right? There's diegetic music and there's non-diegetic music. Anybody knows what they are? Well, yes, the producers and the composers would know, right? So diegetic music uh, is, uh, refers to the music that exists within the narrative of, of a film, TV show, or video game, and is heard by the characters in that world. So if you go, let's say you're watching a movie and there's a bar scene and you're, the characters are actually hearing the music in the bar, in the scene, that's diegetic music. And non-diegetic music would be the opposite of that, which would be um, the referring to music that is added to the film, TV show, or video game for the audience's benefit and not heard by the characters within the story. So diegetic music is music that is heard by the characters in the story and non-diegetic music is added afterwards, after everything is filmed and in post-production, right? So let's talk a little bit about how music can change the mood of a scene, because it can. That's why we have music with film to enhance and change the moods of, of scenes. So I'm going to play a scene from The Lord of the Rings with the original score, then with some variations, and we'll see how the mood of the scene is altered. Thank you. 
the same feeling from, from this music? It's different, right? It makes you feel as if, as if the story is different. Yeah. In, the, in the scene itself, yeah. Comedy, right? You like this one more? Only one more now, I'll take it. So, we can see that uh, yeah, even though there's the same visual, if you change the music, you, as, as he said, you, you start noticing different things in the scene, different ideas jump, jump out at you, the meaning of the scene changes to you, right? That's the power of music. It's very, very, very important. So, now that we've seen how music can change the mood of a scene, let's discuss what a cue is, as well as its creation process. So, a cue refers to a specific segment or section of music. Right? It is composed or selected to accompany, accompany a particular scene or moment, and it is timed and synchronized with the visuals of the scene. And it also enhances the emotional impact, narrative flow, and visual dynamics of the scene. And a cue can also vary in length from a few seconds to several minutes. And it, it evokes specific emotions, emphasizes key moments, and reinforces the storytelling elements of the film. So, how is a cue constructed? Well, let's uh, let. Um, in fact, I'll just I'll just play this, and you final for yourself. Let's just listen. In fact, one of the most important steps in the process. Of By the way, this is from John Williams' forty fourth American Film Institute Life Achievement Award, and Steven Spielberg is talking about the creation process and the spotting process, which is the first step in the cue creation process. Often goes unnoticed. And it's called the spotting session. And it's when we decide what scenes should have music and what scenes should not have music. And it sounds simple, but great composers like John know that the power of music also lies in the absence of music. So that would be step one. Now look at a scene like this. This is the kind of shape our films are in when we finally show it to John for the first time. Not so high! Not so high! Now, John watches the movie and he goes back to his house and he sits alone with a yellow pad and a pencil at his 100 year old Steinway piano and he begins to write. The violins play these notes at exactly this time and at exactly at this tempo. The flutes do this, the brass plays here, then the percussion comes in over there and some of these orchestrations are as complex as Debussy and as accomplished as Stravinsky. But at last, he hands this gigantic mathematical puzzle to an orchestra of nearly 100 people. And it is during this arranged marriage of image and music that audiences fall in love with these movies. Now, this footage nobody has ever seen before. This is from 1982, the scoring session for E.T. And I'm behind the camera, a Super 8 camera, doing my best to capture John at work. So here's uh, the man behind the curtain. He's scoring the scene where the mom played by Dee Wallace uh, first sees E.T. Now, this is what I really want to show you with rough audio and bad focus because you will hear and you will see the very moment that John waves his baton and creates movie magic.
Everyone knows this movie, right? Don't cringe, please. <laughs> oh. Right. So there's one point. There's one part in this uh, movie, this video. I, I need to point out. It's around here. So Elliot, the, the boy on the on the bike, he, he's apprehensive at first, and then um, when the music, the reintroduction of the main theme comes in just at the point when he realizes that everything is okay. And if you if you listen very carefully, there's actually a slight pause before the 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 theme comes back in on the beat. The music is going. One and now it comes. In. So there's a small pause there that John Williams did to ensure that the theme came back in on the downbeat when the guy when when the boy goes, oh my god, yeah, it's okay. And I can guarantee you that that was not by accident. That was on purpose. Us as composers, we have to figure out, well, the directors have to tell us where they want the hit points accented and we have to figure out how to make that work. Whether we have to change the time signature, bring things back one beat, change, put things forward one beat to make sure everything falls on, on beat one. That's things, those are things that we have to do as composers to ensure that the director's vision um, is realized. So, as they, as they said just now, the spotting scene is basically where we collaborate with the, with the director to determine the specific moments in the film that require the music. This is a very important process for us composers. It's very, very, very crucial. Um, we also identify emotional beats, key actions, and dialogue that need musical support. We also discuss the desired mood, tone, and overall vision for the scene with, with the director. And we also pay attention to pacing, rhythm, and timing of the scene to inform the musical choices. Because when we look at the edits, slower cuts in the edits would inform us that we would need to use a slower tempo. Because the slower tempo would match the edits that have slower cuts. When you have faster cuts, you tend to want to use a faster tempo because it tends to match the visual better. Unless you want to create that contrast and use a faster tempo song on a slower edited um, film. Or scene. And we also take note of any visual cues, subtext, or underlying emotions that can guide the musical direction. So the director and I will sit down, whether it's um, over Zoom or in person, we sit down, we look at the film together. He says, okay, here, here, and here, I want the music to start. Here, here, and here, I want it to stop. This is the emotional arc I want. I want this point here um, accented. I don't want this point here accented, and I have to take all that information and figure out what to do. I have to make a lot, a lot, a lot of notes because directors are not the best explainers. Sorry to say, directors are not the best explainers. They are not. They, 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 they try, but when it comes to talking music, they really, I can tell you from experience that we have to translate sometimes. They, have, they, they talk visually and we speak um, you know, music, so we have to translate what suspense means to a, 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 a director, he, I need to know what that sounds like musically. He needs to know what that looks like visually. I need to know what that sounds like musically. All right? So it's two different languages that we have to break that barrier. So then when we get, when we finish the spotting session now, and I go home and I look at the, the, the scene that requires music, I have to now analyze the scene, figure out you know, what exactly I have to do. So we have to study the scene in detail, considering its narrative significance, character dynamics, and emotional tone. Then we take note of any visual cues, subtext, or any underlying emotions to inform our musical choices. Then we analyze the rhythm, of the, the rhythm and timing of the scene to determine the musical dynamics and structure. We also consider the character development story arc and overall themes of the film while, when analyzing the scene. And also we identify key moments, shifts in emotion or dramatic elements that can guide the musical direction. Because if there's a key moment, a key shift in, in tone or emotion, the music has to also um, show that and reflect that as well. Sometimes the music alone reflects the shift and you as the, as the, as the audience member is like, wait, hold on, I'm hearing something different. That means something, all right? So then after we do that now, we have to establish the musical concept. Don't we get there, we get there, we get there. It's a long process, all right? So we first define the desired musical style or genre of the, on, on the tone for the scene, considering its emotional and narrative requirements. 
we determine the instrumentation, like what instruments we're going to use, whether it's orchestra or are we going to use a, a hybrid situation where we use live orchestra, live instruments with samples, or are we going just straight live, or are we just going straight samples? I have to decide that as well, the song palette, what sounds does the director want, or what, does, what sounds can I find or use to elicit the emotion that the director requires for that scene? and song palette that will best capture the essence of the scene and complement the visuals. Then we have to develop a musical concept that aligns with the overall vision and the themes of the film while enhancing the specific scene. And I'll pause right here. If you are a composer and you want to compose for film or any type of media, my first suggestion to you is leave your ego at home. If you want to write music for yourself, do that. But if you are writing music for Anything else, like a movie or, a, or a, any, type, any type of media, the director of that media has to say because you are now entering into a partnership. You are now um, creating music to enhance somebody else's story. So you can't just do what you want. It has to be a collaboration and it has to be an agreed upon collaboration. Then we explore melodic, harmonic, and rhythmic ideas that can effectively convey the intended emotions and support the storytelling. And then we ensure the established musical concept is consistent with the director's vision and the broader musical direction of the film. Then we start composing the cue. So the first thing we do, load the film into our desired digital audio workstation or door uh, and set the appropriate key, time signature, and tempo to match the scene. Then we place hit points or markers throughout the timeline of the scene to highlight or accentuate specific moments or changes in the scene's direction. Those hit points will be, will be given to you by the director. He will tell you, okay, at this point here, I want this accented, that cuff or that hit there, I want that accented, I, will, I, will, I need a shift in emotion at this point here because the character is now going to go, go and do this. So there's a shift in emotion, you have to carry that narrative as well. You have to make sure everything you know, works. Then we actually start writing the music, creating musical sections or motifs that align with the hit points and enhance the intended impact of the scene. And then we revise and refine the cue based on feedback from the director, making adjustments to the timing, instrumentation, or overall musical direction. And then we continuously iterate and fine tune the musical cue, ensuring its cohesiveness with the film and its ability to enhance the intended emotions and storytelling. So while we do that now, we have things to look out for. One, seamless trans synchronization with visuals, that's key. Because anything that's, that's out of sync, you, will, you as the audience member will be like, hmm, something wrong there, that something happened, like someone was a half second off. As audience members, non-musicians can tell, something not right here, so we want to avoid that at all costs. Balance the music with song design and dialogue. There's a hierarchy in media. Dialogue is king, right? So dialogue comes first. In anything, dialogue is the most important. Then comes sound effects or sound design, and then music, right? So sound effects and, 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 and music actually kind of kind of battle sometimes. Most times, music goes under sound effects. Sometimes it can go above, but most times we have to accept the fact that you know we are last on the hierarchy of things, and that's 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 just that's just how it is. And then we also have to follow the dramatic arc of the scene because if you're writing music for a scene and you don't follow the narrative of the scene, well, then you're not doing what the director wants you to, to, to do, right? Which is not what you are asked to do. Then you have to build tension and release, which is like all what music is about in general. Music is all about music in general. It's just tension and release. Tension and release. Millions of different ways to do that, but just tension and release. And then we consider the overall film's narrative and stylistic consistencies when constructing the cue. And then we get feedback from the director. One thing here, revisions. <sighs> revisions are a part of life for composers, right? Many times the director would give feedback asking for small changes here and there due to something not working with a visual. That happens all the time. Or there's a new edit to the scene and they either removed or added frames. So all of the hit points are now early or late. These are common issues and come with the territory, unfortunately. All right, I, um, revisions are a part of life. They are not the most enjoyable part of the job, but they are a part of life. The sooner as a composer you accept that, the better for you, because you are going to have to do revisions, because the music is not for you, it's for somebody else. Always remember that, right? 
Then how do we go about incorporating the steel pan in, in all of this? Because the steel pan, you know, that's my thing, steel pan and music, right? So when people hear the steel pan, they think Caribbean and the beach, etc. It's a very popular stereotype that has found its way into not just films, but various types of visual media. Now, why it's a stereotype, at the end of the day, it works, right? You hear pan, you're on a beach, you say, okay, yes, I'm feeling, you know, the music is appropriate. It works, it's, it's a, excuse, it's a stereotype, yes, but it works. So we can do that. So while we also enforce, so while we enforce stereotypes, we could also break those stereotypes. Because using the pan to geographically locate a scene is all well and good, but the potential of the instrument far surpasses uses like that. It can be used in so many more instances than just, you know, locating a, a scene on, a, on, a, on, a, on a, a beach or something. And we could also use the steel pan with orchestral music. Because film scores are generally, they generally do not use steel pan, using it especially with the orchestra adds a unique sound that can, to some audience members, create a link between the score and the movie, establishing a deeper and more emotional connection and immersing them further into the narrative world. And the steel pan can also contribute to the overall texture of the orchestra, adding layers of rhythmic complexity and percussive accents. Its percussive qualities provide a vibrant and dynamic backdrop to orchestral passages, creating a rich and immersive sonic environment. So, I spoke a lot. Let's get into some musical examples now. All right? So this, some people in the room would be very familiar with what I'm about to play. Um, I scored this this year. Um, I, had to, I was contacted by a director, um, and he told me I had two days to do it. Yeah, two days. He's like, hey, are you free this weekend? I have a, I have a, I have a project for you. I'm like, sure, where's that? I have an ad, and I needed to do it in two days. And I wanted to sound local but epic. I'm like, hmm, okay. That's why I came to you, you know, use the guy with the local songs and the epic. So, okay, I'm like, okay, no problem. So, I had to do this in two days. Take a look at it. You all know this, right? Right. Mm -hmm. In the background, of course, of course, right? <laughs> this time is a geographically located. We can enforce stereotypes here now in, in this particular instance. <laughs> nice catch. <laughs> So a steel pan can be used in trailers. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. So steel pan can be used in trailers. They can be used in many different types of media. Um, I, I realize that they, especially, they work especially well with steel pan, uh, with montages in, in, um, in movies. So this scene is from Pendulum, directed by Michael Rochford. I scored this scene, and uh, this is one of my favorite scenes from this movie because there's pan and orchestra and stuff. I just, I just really like, like this scene. So. The director said, oh my gosh, you should write a whole track for like three and a half minutes about that. Yeah, I didn't. I just did it for this scene. <laughs> right, and then this one. So this particular scene, I'm going to talk you through it. Well, not through the entire thing. This is from the Westworld scoring competition in 2020. Um, I did, this is a global scoring competition. And I decided to enter just for you know, the fun of it. 
Oh yeah, yeah. We both lost. <laughs> we both lost, right? <laughs> nice. Somebody else also feels my pain. <laughs> All right. So let's let's take a listen. So the music starts off soft. Verified. Enable semi-automatic control. Disable safety features. Maximum speed. Go. You can give me a little less bass for you. A little less bass. All right, good, thanks. And then when you get to in the car, bring it down. Dialogue. Got it here. What's happening to him? I think he's switching genres. And I brought in the local part, where it sounds like soccer. Head south. At this point, I took all the bass frequencies because we have a far, a far away shot for all the bass frequencies. And then brought it back in on the car here. And then brought it back down in the car. Is that a standard issue? No. It's not. The music gets a little bit louder as the outside of the car. Then bring it back down in the car. Point and shoot. Get load a little bit. Police ahead. Maintain speed. Maintaining speed. Sharp left. Now. Change the key. I went up a tone to indicate in that you know, there's a ship in, in, in the trunk. By the way, I had two days to do so. Yeah. Hold on. See what the base frequencies again. Seen down there, right? The man, car match up, seen done, right? No, no, it's not done yet. So we had the music comes back in. All right, I need you drop in, intersect, maximum speed. Arm charges now. Accelerate. Bring another layer. When when well, that's accelerate, you bring another layer just to add the intensity. Stop. And then when he says, "Stop," the music stops. <laughs> Why are we stopping? Get down. Some nice pads, just to, you know. Yeah. Then motorbike comes in. I don't want to like mommy. So as he said, we didn't win. <laughs> thank, 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 thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much. Oh, thank, <laughs> thank you very much. So. Back to steel pan. So steel pan could be used in, in as I said, in many different ways. I this was a, from a recording session from NYU um, called Dr. Snyder. I we have one free recording session every semester. So you just write what you want to write and you get it recorded. So I was like, you know what? I want to do something with orchestra and pan, obviously. 
So if you watch uh, right about, yeah, I can use the mouse. What happened to okay? the mouse? Right here is the steel pan, um, the steel pan part. I use the sample library Eliminate steel pan collection. That's why I didn't actually play it in live. I use the um, sample library for it. Did I have two days to do this? No, I didn't have two days to do this. I had more than two days to do this one. <laughs> So it was all about trying to find the best way to you know, incorporate steel pan with the orchestra, trying to get the blend right, because the steel pan has a very um, noticeable tone. So it can stand out if you don't know how to you know, dampen it a bit to get it within the texture. Sometimes you have to lay it with other um, short attacked um, instruments like you know, pizzicato strings or piano or something like that. Also, we could, uh, Steve Punk could do podcast themes as well. So this is an Apple podcast theme from Concert Honesty by uh, Josh Quillen. And I wrote this theme frame as well. Very simple, short and simple. Very sweet. And he was like, oh my God, I want that. I want that. He's like, yeah, no problem. And lastly, games. Steel pan can be used in video games. So this was from uh, my NYU scoring, um, video game scoring uh, course. And we had to write the music for what we call the wise adventure game. So obviously I did steel pan and, you know, because that's me. So this is just to showcase that steel pan actually can be used in different kind of games. some volume of the music is. This is the, um, the menu theme. And with game music, you have to be very careful because it has to loop seamlessly into each other. So there'll be 30 seconds or one minute or whatever. What are you doing? That doesn't um, go back and loop seamlessly. Which is a challenge. All right, let's start. This is bass pan and harp. Then you change, change worlds or scenes, so the music has to you know, change. You see tongue, so it's nice and relaxed. Tempo is slow. Hello, adventurer. You are just in time. Something's gone terribly wrong, and our village has been Fast struck. Forward, all that can you help me save a let? I believe I, I remember. Why can? You got time for a lot. Bass fans here as well. Magnificent. Let me see. This must be a new kind of evil fizzle. To continue our research, can you collect a sample of this? I would clearly embark on this dangerous journey myself, but I fear my claustrophobia would rear its head. Also, I'm terrified of combat, evil, danger, monsters, and hearty exercise. Have fun. Oh, and one more thing. I see that you're armed. Go see. Remember, when you... Yeah, so 
Wanga sword. Hmm. You would walk as with. So you also have to run your stingers as well, which are um, when you get something and you have to you pay those little. Yeah, those are the short pieces of the day. You also have to run them as well. Favorite track in the whole game? I really like this track. Rest, that's just to, to, to showcase that you can actually put seal pan in, oh, thank you very much. That you can put seal pan in games. And the last thing I want to show you, um, I wasn't going to show this, but I came on Monday and I think JC was the one that was saying, um, sorry, not Monday, Wednesday. He was saying, even if you have stuff on your hard drive that you don't like, you might not like it. Other people might, might like it. So just, you know, put it out there. It might be bad. It might be good. You never know. So. I will, this is totally honest here. I scored a scene partic in particularly for this, um, for this conference, but I didn't like it. I listened to it and I was like, uh, I, don't, I don't like it. So I wasn't gonna put it in, but last night I was like, JC said, you know, even though you don't like something, you know, still put it out there. So I'm still gonna play it for you. Uh, so this is a, a documentary called Penguins. If you are a composer and you want to start to write music for film and different types of media, and you don't know where to get scenes without the music, but with the dialogue, then you could go to the qtube.com, which is a, a website that has all of that for you. So I, done, I, done, I downloaded this scene. It's a scene about penguins, it's a, it's a documentary. And I said, let me try to use steel pan in this and see what happens. Because it's about penguins, you know, Arctic, Antarctica, you know, it's the opposite of the beach. So, you know, pan could work, boy. Let's see. You tell me. In one of the harshest environments on Earth, adaptation is essential for survival. These are Adelie penguins, a species native to the icy waters of the Southern Ocean. Try to make it fun. <laughs> Despite living in one of the harshest environments on Earth, Adelie penguins are highly adapted to life in the cold. Penguins have a layer of insulating feathers that help them stay warm in snow and freezing water. They also have a layer of fat under their skin, called blubber, that helps them conserve heat. Adelie penguins are skilled hunters, preying on a variety of fish. They can dive to depths of over 500 feet and stay underwater for up to 20 minutes at a time. In the breeding season, Adelie penguins return to their colonies to mate and raise their young. The male penguins build nests out of rocks and defend their territory against intruders. The females lay a single egg, which both parents take turns incubating and protecting until it hatches, and the circle of life continues.
thank you very much. We have come to the end of my presentation. I hope that you learned some things. And if you have any questions, please don't ask them nothing hard in the panel. Uh, other than that, you can talk to me outside anywhere you feel. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you very much, DK. Let's give him another round of applause. So we're putting him center stage on his own, his own, his own. Um, I'm going to allow three very quick questions. Please keep the questions very short and to the point. Keep your answers, dear Sir DK, um, short and to the point. Thank you. <laughs> So first question was actually here, and then we'll go here. Who's the third hand? All right, third hand, and we have all three questions. Yes, sir. Voice. Not much, so much piano, but I could survive. But I'm more of a, I'm a steel pan player. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I do the other two as well. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. And perfect pitch or relative pitch? Relative pitch. I don't want perfect pitch. He real sickening with it, sir. I don't want perfect pitch. Like I the worst person to sit down and watch a movie with is him because he's be like, ah, that key. Or, ah, this. <laughs> it is ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> we went to UE together. So this is my experience. But so was my first friend in UE because you registered late. So she was my first friend. <laughs> Um, second question. Yeah. Um, no, that was not the hand. The hand next to you. Sorry. <laughs> you had you had your hand up. Not so. Oh, sir. Okay. Sorry. Yes, Allison. Hi. Hi. Oh, thank you. Um. No, just music. Kind of both, but um, not with <laughs> the band. When I'm doing my, I'm trying to do my own side thing. And I don't even know how I'm going to perform it live. In fact, I don't know if you saw those two videos during COVID that I put out, more electronic. Do, do we have our own show going on in the back? What's happening? I'm going to try and do that alone first, release it, and then decide how to play it live and if I need people. <laughs> and then... I think it's Andrew's sort of. gonna For those viewing online, we're having some sort of technical difficulty in the back there, so just give us a few seconds to sort that out. Okay, so can does Alison have the mic? Right. So Alison, can you just ask over your question? Sure. Or statement. Hi, God, I feel like Whitney Houston. Okay, <laughs> so I just wanted to say congratulations. Thank That's you. fantastic. You. You're fantastically talented. Oh, you could see that, right? The thing is, what I find strange is that you would feel what you've just shown us as sort of like not your A game. Correct. Whereas to me, watching that, and the subtlety and the sensitivity of what you did fits much better for me. And I don't mean this to be rude, but then the game. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. And so whatever you have hidden at your home or in the studio, I think <laughs> you should expose it. That's Thank my point. Much. Thank you. Thank you. I'll do that. I think I will. Thanks. And Yana had the third question. Ayana, okay. The mic is coming across in the front here for you. Yes, duck, tuck, and roll. I like it. <laughs> Hi, good day. Hi, good. Thank you so much for your presentation. It's very, thank, thank very, you. very cool. Thank you. Um, uh, my question. Is, sorry, my question is two part. Two part. Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the first one is uh, based on your experience scoring, um, when it translates to Trinidad and Tobago market or industry, what would you like filmmakers in Trinidad to understand about this process and the need for it? How long? I have one minute. <laughs> I, need, I need a day or two. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you want, you want to be honest, right? Yes, please. Okay. Um, 
upcoming filmmakers, music tends to be one of the last things you think about. Um, I've, I've, it has, I've, I've had experiences where it's like, hey, I just realized, oh my God, I have no music. Hey, DK, you can do some music. For me. Like, the, that kind of thing. Like, it's, a, it's, a, it's like an afterthought. And music is not an afterthought and should not be seen or treated as an afterthought. It's an integral part of the process. Yes, it comes at the end of the process, but it has to be incorporated way earlier than that. Because it, it, if, it, if it's going to affect the narrative of the scene, then that has to be given its respect. And the music is not just about going online and looking for um, you know, royalty-free music and you know, searching suspense, and like you got suspense and you chuck it in, but it doesn't follow the hit points in the narrative of your scene. You need, as a director, you need somebody to, to, to create a music that would follow the narrative of your music, of, 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 of your visual. And you can't just get that online. So I think the, 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 the respect for the music itself, the understanding that music is a very integral part of the process and not an afterthought, would be two of the main things I would like to get across to come um, to And pay you properly, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's, 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 that's yeah, yeah. That's, that goes also. Yeah. And the second part of it was um, for the aspiring composers, uh, do you... Uh, are you looking for assistance? I have one already. <laughs> <laughs> He's sitting down right there. <laughs> Raise your hand, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Jahaya Hoop is my, is my assistant. He's extremely talented, and I can't wait to see what he's going to do in about five or ten years. Five years. Yeah. Crazy stuff. All right. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Samai. Thank you very much. A very, very active presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much.